In this video, we are forecasting a horde of powerful storms that will work over the central U.S. starting today into Wednesday. The Storm Prediction Center has issued a slight risk of severe weather for today, an enhanced risk for tomorrow, a slight risk for day three, and a 15% risk for day four. We're going to talk about how these very concerning storms will unfold and how they could affect you. Welcome back, y'all. Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. We are mainly going to focus on tomorrow's severe weather in this video because it's the most significant one right now and it's also close enough now to where we can really analyze it on our short range models but one by one i'm going to be talking about each severe weather risk from today tomorrow into sunday monday and tuesday so make sure you watch the whole video because a lot of people will be affected by these storms and as always make sure you slap a like on this video for the youtube algorithm so we can get this vital information in front of a lot of people who probably otherwise wouldn't see it whether they've cut cable or they just don't trust the news anymore let's make sure we show up on their recommended feed here on youtube and hit that subscribe button with the notifications turned on so you never miss a video or a live stream which I may be doing tomorrow. Now without further ado let's get right into it. All right, we're gonna go straight into forecasting here on the weather models. We're starting off with the NAM three kilometer model here in North Dakota and South Dakota to cover that slight risk of severe weather today that will start in South Dakota, okay? We've got a 5% chance of tornadoes and a 15% chance of damaging wind and hail. And we're gonna see what that could look like as we go later on into the day on our simulated radar here. If you wanna keep up with the date and time, it's always gonna be displayed above my head. Remember, that's in Eastern time. So we're starting off around 11 a.m. or 10 a.m. over here, which is around the time this video will go up. And as you can see, we've got rain showers out here, just general downpours with your occasional clap of thunder coming out of the west here into North Dakota and South Dakota. Uh, this is associated with a low pressure system. You can see that spinning motion there as we go later on into the day. Here we are around 5 p.m. That spin is bringing up some warm, moist air here and that's combining with some of the cooler air that's coming down behind it and it's sparking up some big thunderstorms here. Once again, around 5 p.m. today, we're gonna see some big storms pop up near Blunt or Miller uh, in South Dakota there, but really the ingredients don't come together for tornadoes until we get a little bit further to the east. Once this thing congeals into a big bow echo and moves towards Aberdeen, uh, we're gonna see some really strong lower level jet stream winds here, a lot of wind shear, and I do believe we're gonna see some embedded supercells in this line of storms or maybe even some uh, spin up tornadoes uh, inside of this line as it comes through. So I do think the main threat here is gonna be damaging wind as that bows through, uh, but there is gonna be the occasional tornado here, okay? So once again, Aberdeen points eastward. Uh, that's where we're expecting the peak of tornado activity this evening. And we expect the damaging wind, hail, and tornado threat to extend all the way into extreme southeastern portions of North Dakota tonight, and even extreme western portions of Minnesota as well, okay? But this is gonna die out pretty quick, especially once we get into, you know, past midnight. Uh, this stuff's gonna fizzle out over here in Minnesota. Uh, but right in there is where your hot spot's gonna be for uh, your damaging winds and tornadoes this evening. There's not really a whole lot else I can say about that. Just be weather aware today. Make sure you have a NOAA weather radio or some sort of weather app that will alert you if there is a tornado watch or warning that's issued. And then make sure you have a plan in place uh, so that you know what to do when those things uh, inevitably happen. And I believe y'all are gonna be all right. Okay, now let's zoom out a little bit. Here's the storm we were just looking at and let's keep pushing this forward. And we're gonna continue to see some storms around Duluth and stuff as that moves on through and we'll see some severe weather up there but the main threat our next focus area is going to be shifting down here and this is where we start talking about tomorrow's severe weather threat this is the main one this is the main event right now this is what's prompting that enhanced risk from the storm prediction center that includes Tulsa and Oklahoma City we've got a 10% chance of tornadoes with this one and a 30% chance of damaging hail and damaging wind and it is possible that some of those parameters are increased as we go forward so let's look at what's going to happen here According to the NAM three kilometer model, we're gonna see uh, a possibly some supercell thunderstorms popping up right around Childress in Texas around 7 p.m. tomorrow. And this is the first beginning stages of our severe weather outbreak tomorrow. We've got big supercells moving through Altus and the Snyder area around 9 p.m. on Sunday, October 10th. And then very quickly, these supercells congeal into multicellular clusters and then eventually a big squall line or a quasi-linear convective system. And this is going to happen around Oklahoma City and Tulsa between the 10 p.m. and a midnight time frame, according to this model. And it's also at this point where we think the tornado risk is actually going to be the highest. And I'll explain more about that here in a second, but I just want to show you the full progression of these storms. Some of the stronger storms are going to be working into extreme southwestern Missouri and western Arkansas, possibly around 3 or 4 a.m. Uh, but this stuff's really going to be weakening out at this point. Lots of heavy rain, though, through uh, central Missouri, possibly some flash flooding there. And for the most part, that's the progression of tomorrow's storms. Now, let's go back a little bit 
bit and let's zoom in on Oklahoma. Okay, now we're looking at the great state of Oklahoma and we've also switched over to the HRRR. This is the high resolution rapid refresh model. This is gonna give us an even better look at what the radar could look like, but this is a different model and it has a slightly different solution here. Let me show you what's happening. Here we are around noon on Sunday. You can see those rain showers building off to the north associated with the low pressure system that's eventually going to spark our big storms. 3 p.m., 4 p.m., 5 p.m., 6 p.m. Still not a whole lot going on here, but once we get into 7 p.m., once again, this is Eastern time, uh, 6 p.m. Central, uh, we suddenly get a huge line of what looks to be supercells here. Once again, from near Snyder, uh, just west of Oklahoma City, and then all the way up through southeastern Kansas. So the timing here is a little bit different on the HRRR, but I like that this one's a higher resolution, so we're gonna stick with this one for now. Supercell thunderstorms continue to form and move through the Oklahoma City region, uh, you know, around 8 or 9 p.m., and then Tulsa, possibly around 9 or 10 p.m. So this is also showing that the storms are gonna form earlier and move quicker. And then we still have that congealing squall line or that uh, QLCS, you guys love hearing me say it, the quasi-linear convective system moving through, uh, which at this point will still be able to produce tornadoes all the way through eastern Oklahoma and maybe even into extreme western Arkansas and southwestern Missouri. What we're looking at now is the significant tornado parameter. This is a model that puts together all of the different attributes uh, that have to come together to make a tornado. And it gives us a rating on a scale of one to 10 as to how likely it is uh, for a tornado to form, or at least a rotating storm to form uh, within a given area. And as you can see around 7 p.m. on Sunday, October 10th, we have some slightly elevated significant tornado parameters here where those storms are popping up. Very quickly, those numbers increase dramatically. Uh, we've got a nine out of 10 just south of the Oklahoma City area here around 8 p.m. And then just a widespread area of uh, values above five, six, and seven as this goes off to the east. And then it really just explodes up to 11 and 12 there in extreme southeastern Oklahoma and northeastern Texas. Now, if we compare this image right here with what the radar could look like, you can see that our big strongest part of the storm, the squall line up here, is, is further north than uh, those elevated significant tornado parameter numbers. It could mean that all of the energy is placed up here away from where all of the wind shear is and we won't have to deal with as many tornadoes as what could be possible, but it also could mean that we could get significant tornadoes forming in this area down here if supercells form on the southern edge of this line. I can't tell you which scenario is going to play out. It's going to be a now casting situation. So once again, make sure you subscribe to this channel and keep up with my updates here and possibly even a live stream as this is going on. It'll be important uh, to look at everything in real time. But yeah, this is an odd event. Even though the uh, scattered supercell thunderstorms are going to be happening to the west, the increased tornado probabilities are actually happening to the east once these storms congeal together. And it's it's still a possible that we get tornadoes even in a line of storms like this, even though it's less likely and generally they are weaker. The problem here is that this is 11 p.m. and the other models showed this, you know, around midnight or 1 a.m. Uh, so we are going to be talking about naders in the dark here in eastern Oklahoma, possibly southeastern Kansas, southwest uh, Missouri, uh, western Arkansas, extreme northern areas of Texas near the Red River there. This is something we've got to take seriously. you got to listen to those watches and warnings as they come out. Keep up with your local National Weather Service. And of course, stay tuned to this channel as we continue to update you on this uh, serious situation. And here's the lower level jet stream. Just another graphical representation of why that tornado threat is going to increase as the storms go east. Here we are at 8 p.m. The storms are here. That lower level jet stream is providing wind shear in this area. Certainly no small thing. We have, you know, some values here near 40, 50 knots, uh, which is enough to cause tornadoes. Absolutely. Uh, but you can see that the reason why we get more concerned as these storms go to the east is that we <laughs> approach 70 or 80 knots there uh, on the lower level jet stream, the 850 millibar level of the atmosphere. And that continues to expand and intensify as it moves east. So once again, uh, this area of uh, Oklahoma, I do think you are under the gun for a potential tornado outbreak uh, if all of these uh, ingredients come together. What we can hope for is that we get a solid line of storms. The tornadoes that do occur are weak and hopefully the storms don't move through until much later in the evening and overnight hours or, or even the early morning hours so that there's less energy out there for these storms to feed off of. But no matter what, there is going to be a significant severe weather outbreak out here and I need you guys to take it seriously. Spread the word, share this video, let everybody know that we could be having some big storms in Oklahoma in Texas tomorrow.
right, now I'll have more on tomorrow's severe weather threat tomorrow. First thing in the morning, I'm gonna have a big video out about it and I'm just going to talk about that enhanced risk or maybe even a moderate risk if they decide to upgrade it. But in this video, we've gotta move on, okay? We gotta talk about the next day. We do have a day three outlook now where there is a slight risk of severe weather that includes St. Louis, Indianapolis, Chicago, all the way up through Michigan. And that's associated with this storm that's gonna to happen tomorrow. It's gonna to carry up this way and we're gonna watch that happen right now. Now we are looking at the NAM 12 kilometer model, so it's a much lower resolution. We can't see things as well, but you can get the idea. Storms are gonna go through the St. Louis area uh, early, earlier in the day near noon, and then they're gonna move through Illinois around 2 p.m. And then we do expect them to intensify pretty good here in Indiana, uh, near the Chicago region or just east of there near South Bend. And then that line of storms is gonna continue to move north and east into the Great Lakes region. And we do expect, once again, severe storms to progress all the way through Michigan, uh, possibly making it to the northern half, but definitely the southwestern half uh, is going to experience severe weather, possibly late Monday into the extreme early morning hours on Tuesday. As of right now, it seems like the biggest threats here are gonna be damaging wind and possibly a little bit of hail. The tornado threat is still something that I have to work out, but I don't believe we're going to be seeing a widespread tornado outbreak here. Uh, that could change, uh, so make sure you stay tuned. But as of right now, this does look like a damaging wind threat uh, primarily. All right, now we're looking at the Euro model, and we're going to forecast that day four potential severe weather outbreak. And as you can see there, we've got a 15% risk there on the day four convective outlook, and that's kind of rare. Usually, you only see anything between days one and three, uh, but this one's been on there since day seven, so this is a pretty interesting interesting situation as well. Now, it's important to note that this uh, severe weather outlook is coming from a completely different storm. Okay, so it's not the one that just went through uh, Oklahoma that we just looked at. This is a brand new storm that's forming up and it's gonna spark some severe weather around, uh, looks like 2 a.m. on Wednesday. So late Tuesday into the early morning hours on Wednesday. Once again, it could be another overnight kind of thing. We could be seeing more naders in the dark, which is something you never wanna see. But this one takes the threat a little bit further north and it's also a little bit more widespread. I think we could see severe weather, a uh, big time storms in Kansas, Southern Nebraska, all the way through portions of Oklahoma that aren't going to be as affected by tomorrow's storms and then also down into the Amarillo, Texas area. So big widespread outbreak of potential severe thunderstorms there uh, with also once again a tornado potential uh, during the overnight and early morning hours on Wednesday. Now that once again, that could be our saving grace. Uh, the fact that this is happening in, in the early morning hours, even though the storm is strong enough to still produce very bad storms without daylight, the fact that they're not happening during the heating of the day could turn down the intensity a little bit. Nevertheless, I want everybody that's going to be affected by this storm to take it seriously. Another thing I want to show you about this uh, potential severe weather outbreak on Tuesday and Wednesday is the surface cape. So the convective available potential energy here is uh, actually going to be pretty high. We were talking just yesterday about how the models were only showing possibly 1500 joules per kilogram of, uh, of energy out there. Now we're looking at for this storm, possibly here in central Oklahoma, uh, near 4000 joules per kilogram of cape. And some of that energy will actually be absorbed by by the storm as it comes through. So we could be talking about, uh, once again, a widespread severe weather outbreak here with multiple storms spanning for hundreds of miles uh, rather than a, a mesoscale situation. You know what I'm saying? So the dynamics and the size and the power of this storm is actually much greater uh, than the one that we're talking about for tomorrow. But we're just not close enough to this one yet to really pinpoint exactly where those threats are gonna be and who's gonna get what. But you know a storm is strong when you look at the satellite image and you see a big comma head like this. This is what the satellite could look like on Wednesday, October 13th at 8 a.m. You got your big time thunderstorms on this side of the storm. You got your heavy rain over here. And then on the back side, you have uh, some very heavy snow, okay? A very, this is a massive storm, almost the length of the United States and broad enough to cause all modes of severe weather. Once again, tornadoes, hail, severe thunderstorms, flash flooding, and heavy snow and, uh, you know, brief uh, blizzard conditions. Absolutely massive jumbo storm there. Let's check out the uh, snow potential. All right, here's that major snowstorm in the Rocky Mountains. It's going to be coming through and dumping a bunch of snow, especially in Utah, portions of Montana and Wyoming's the bullseye there. And then even into northwestern portions of uh, Colorado, especially in the higher elevations, Wednesday, October 13th at 8 a.m., you're going to be seeing some uh, blinding snow up here, some really strong winds, uh, possibly some drifting snow, and certainly some very quickly accumulating snow as that storm wraps up and gets out of there around 11 a.m. on Thursday. There's your total snowfall map. And once again, 
it looks like somebody's going to get 30 inches of snow out of this thing. That's going to happen at the top of a mountain somewhere here in northern Wyoming. Uh, but, but this model is showing a broad, widespread area of 10 inches of snow, a foot of snow, two feet of snow. Even those valleys, the low valleys, uh, are seeing you know accumulating snow here. So this is going to be a major snowstorm uh, for the Rocky Mountains here in southern Montana, Wyoming, uh, down through Idaho, Utah, even portions of Nevada, uh, Colorado, northern New Mexico, and Arizona. A lot of people are going to be uh, impacted by this. But once again, the higher up you go, the worse it's going to be. And there's not usually a lot of people on top of those mountains. And that's all the weather talk I have for you today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Severe weather mode is still activated here, so I will be back tomorrow morning with another big update on our severe weather outbreak tomorrow. And then possibly I could be going live tomorrow evening, depending on the severity of the situation and also the timing. So I appreciate you guys sticking with me. Once again, make sure you share this video. Let, let's make sure everybody knows what's coming. And I'll see you early tomorrow. Tomorrow, goodbye. Ooh.